Uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu once lost his armor, an armor that he had, and it was so close to his heart. I'm not too sure if it was the same one that we spoke about earlier, but it was one of his armors, right? He lost it. And some time later, he was the Amir. He was the Amirul Mu'mineen, the Khalifatul Muslimin. He was in charge and he had vast kingdom. When he arrived in Kufa, he saw in the marketplace someone selling an armor. Lo and behold, it was his. <laughs> He looks at this Jewish man selling the armor. He says, where did you get this from? He says, well, I'm selling it. He says, it's mine. No, it's not yours. I bought it from so-and-so who bought it from so-and-so, whatever it was. He says, no, it's mine. Let's go. I take you to the Qadi. Qadi meaning the court, the judge. Who was the judge? The judge was appointed by Ali. Nabi Talib radiallahu anh. His name was Shuraih. Shuraih was a powerful judge. He was appointed by Ali radiallahu anh. Ali radiallahu anhu is taking a Jewish man to that court. He sat in front of this judge whom he appointed and he says, you know what? This Jewish man has my armor. So Shuray says, Amirul Mu'mineen. Now this was a just man. Amirul Mu'mineen, as much as I would like to believe you, I need to ask you for evidence. Now that's a tough one. You don't have evidence. We cannot rule in your favor. He says, I have evidence. The best of the youth, Al Hassan Wal Hussein, here they are, the grandchildren of Muhammad. They will bear witness that this armor is mine. So Shuraih says, I know, but children cannot bear witness for their fathers. You know, there is an issue here, clash of interests, as they say. So if the children bear witness for their father, we won't accept it. You've got to bring someone else. And he didn't have others who were ready. So Shuraih decided, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, with all due respect, with all absolute due respect, I need to tell you that I have ruled that this armor belongs to the Jewish man. Guess what happened? Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu accepted it, he acknowledged it, he thanked him, he congratulated the Jewish man, and he's now going away. Subhanallah. But the Jewish man says, but the Jewish man, subhanallah, he looks at Shuraih and he looks at Amirul Mu'mineen who appointed him. And he says, wow, subhanallah, look at this. The Amir is actually being told that this is the Jewish man's. And in the heart of the Jewish man, he knew, you know what, this does belong to him actually. So he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. He says, I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I'm entering the fold of Islam by bearing witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is indeed the messenger of Allah. If this is the quality that he taught, and if these are the people that he built, then I am part of them. Subhanallah. Question I have for you and I. When the non-Muslims see us, I think a lot of the times they run away from the deed. In a lot of cases. Why? Because we are not living up to what we should be. Where is the sense of justice? Where is your courtesy, your humility, your honesty, your humbleness? Where is it gone? O Ummah of Muhammad, peace be upon him. These are the men whom he built. What about us? Wouldn't we like to be the true ambassadors? Don't you want to be one of those who will go into paradise? Well, those were the qualities of those who were told you are from paradise. What about us? Let's develop some of these qualities. When people see you, they should want to be like you. When people see what you do, they should feel connected to you. When people see how you say things and how you address them, they should feel respected and they should really feel the connection because you are human beings after all. Subhanallah. Let's learn to respect one another. Humanity at large. We're part of one family. We are related. Every one of us here is related and all those on earth are related because guess where we came from? The Prophet Noah may peace be upon him. And before that the Prophet Adam may peace be upon him. Our forefather. May Allah grant us ease and goodness. Imagine this beautiful story. The character and conduct of the people, the justice system drew them towards Islam. Today, a lot of things even drift the Muslims away from Islam. You have a Muslim, a sister, a brother. They are struggling with a few things. And the first thing as you meet them, instead of Assalamu Alaikum, you say Astaghfirullah. 
I mean, is there a reply for that? Am I supposed to reply you somehow? You know, when someone greets you, you're supposed to greet back with a better greeting. So if someone says, Assalamu Alaikum, what should we say? May peace be upon you. That we say, Wa Alaikum Assalam. May peace be upon you too. Wa Rahmatullah. And the blessings and the mercy of Allah. Wa Barakatuh. And the, and the blessings of Allah. That's what we should say. But nowadays you see someone, just because of the way they're dressed, you say, Astaghfirullah. Well, brother or sister, if that happens to you, I can teach you a better reply. If someone looks at you and says, Astaghfirullah, say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That's all you got to do. That's it. And I promise you, they'll just look at you. <laughs> and then you can tell them, look, the Quran says, when you greet me with a greeting, I would greet with a better greeting, inshallah. So, you know, you sought Allah's forgiveness for you. And I said, indeed, all might and power belong solely to Allah. Subhanallah. There we are. But my brothers and sisters, on a more serious note, Let's never judge people. You don't know the struggles of people. You don't know what they may be going through. One little push, one small good deed from you might actually change their life. People are struggling. People are going through so much. We're all going through so much in the same way. We wouldn't like people judging us. We shouldn't judge them. Not at all. No one for that matter. Keep guiding, keep being kind. And inshallah, you will see the doors opening the doors of goodness. Getting back to the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. He was actually murdered. He was murdered in the year 40 Hijri by a man known as Abdurrahman ibn Muljim. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from fitna. The lesson I learned from it and I'm going to close with this is if people try to create disunity amongst you and hatred amongst you don't allow that to happen do not allow that to happen when people spew hate don't let it filter into your heart no we should never be tasting wrath from one another but rather when you see a fellow believer you should feel so good you should feel calm you should feel that i have a brother i have a sister and in order to feel that feeling you should give it to others as well the problem today across the globe, we find that we are affected negatively more from members of our own ummah than anyone else. If you look at the fighting and the killing across the globe, a lot of it are people who read the Shahada fighting one another. A lot of it are people who read the Shahada killing one another. It's happening in our homes sometimes where we don't get along with those whom we have a million things in common with. I want to ask you to take home today something powerful and that is do i spread love or hate question take that question home with you do i spread love or hate that's the question wallahi your life will change if you want to answer that with love your life will change and that starts with your spouse your parents your children your in-laws your outlaws whoever they are sorry Whoever they are, subhanallah, your community, those you agree with, those you disagree with, those whom you disagree very strongly with, subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease.